So, today is pain demonstration day and we have a brave volunteer, Brian, joining me here. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate that you're doing this. I do find that these pain demonstrations are extremely helpful for other people who are also in pain. So do know that you're going to be an extension for a lot of people, you know, sure. helping them yeah. to find answers as well and everything. So really, really cool. Thank you. So we know that we're working on pain. But tell me a little bit more about this, this pain that you sure. have. <clears throat> so firstly, um, the pain started about 15 years ago mm -hmm. and it started with just a spasm in my lower back. Um, yeah, it just kind of locked up and I was out of action for two days. That's, that's the first time that I can remember. Having said that, um, my dad's always had lower back pain. So he had, okay. he had an injury playing, he plays hockey for South Africa actually. And oh. he, when he was younger, he had an accident and they fused his lower discs. So he's constantly had back issues, you know, forever. Okay. Um, so that's also in the mix. Um, and then I just want to mention on my mother's side, she's an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Because, mainly because she's adopted. Um, okay. And so we don't know what kind of genetic the, the predisposition genetic, yeah. is on that side. She's also um, manic depressive. <laughs> so... There's a lot of stuff going on on both sides. And oh, and one last thing, on my dad's side, I inherited severe asthma. So as a kid, I was really, really sick all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I nearly died constantly you know, in hospital, a lot of asthma issues. So yeah, that's kind of a summary. So yeah, I got a whole whole bunch of things going on. I wish all my clients were like this. He just gave me the full download. I'm like, okay, he ticked that out. He question, question, tick, tick, tick in my head. <laughs> that's brilliant. I'm just gonna break it down also for everyone else. And also for those of you watching, so um, what he already went into was when did the pain start? That's important because what we want to look at is the general emotional theme, the stress that was building up leading to that point, right? So what's really interesting is I wouldn't be surprised if the emotional stress that he felt when his back cave in would be similar, very similar to his dad. Emotional psychosomatic stress when his lower back also gave in. Because this already moment he was talking, it just like it, it's trauma transfer in capital letters. What we talked about earlier this morning. And also, what I want to add and ask here is there's one thing that you didn't answer, so I have one question for you. And that is when you have a parent that's adopted, whatever the psychosomatic, you know, or ailments or whatever it is that their biological parents had and it is being expressed through them. I would always look at the family that they were adopted into because we do tend to choose the perfect ancestral and DNA lineage match that can help us to give us the experiences that we want or need based on our biological makeup. Right? So I'm just curious, what, what were mom's adopted parents like? Do you know anything? Um, just that... No, not like just that she was adopted by her, so her mother was um, a single mom. Okay. Um, she had two of her own kids, but then she t she took on her, I think it was her sister's child, or, you know, I'm not sure, like we don't know exactly where she came from, but it was somebody she knew who had this kid, didn't want it, and she said, okay, I've got two of my own, because it was out of wedlock, she said, okay, okay, I'll take it in with mine, but she was a single parent, um, so there was no male figure in her. In, wow. in her, you know, growing up, you know, father's Because yeah. the, the reason why I asked is that lower back for women, one of many, not all, not always the case, but one of many cases is the, the lack of support from an alpha male figure. Security. Sec and, and security in the sense of financial, being able to be there as a provider. Because a man for a woman genetically is normally seen as the base of the foundation of a family. So if that's absent, it's very common to feel it in the lower back as well. I mean, lower back could be, as I said, more than just that. But I'm just now thinking of the possibilities of the psychosomatic programming. Got it. Okay. So, have you met um, mom's adopted mom? No. Okay. So, we don't really know much about her. No. That's okay. No problem. Got it. Okay, so here, 15 years ago, you spine, let's do about lower back spasm. Got it. And dad also, you said, dad had it. Okay. Got it. 
So tell me, how much is this lower back pain for you out of 10? Like 10 is like really out there and zero is, it's, it's calm. Um, it's constantly about a three, but then if I sit for a couple of hours, it goes up to a five. Oh, you really you know, feel it? Yeah, by the end of the day, it's like a seven. Ouch. So you when know, you leave a yeah. class, it's like, I, got, I saw you at a three and you leave it a seven. Yeah. Ouch. <coughs> so it's constant, yeah. but it kind of goes up and down, depending on what's going on. And, of you know, course, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not even physical activity, it's psychosomatic activity yeah, as well. Yeah, true. <laughs> got it. So tell me right now, how much is it? Out of ten, you said three. Or three. Yeah. I just want to reference so that we have something to go back to, and then I'll of course check with you again at the end of the class to see because we also have that integration period, but still just to observe and monitor that. Okay, got it. So, just. What is the medical, do you have a medical diagnosis of your lower back? Yeah, just... the medical diagnosis is degenerative discs, um, mm. which I believe is common from my dad's side as well. But the interesting thing is I've found that the pain isn't always related to what's going on physically because, and this has kind of led me into the medic, you know, to this course, is that I've noticed that um, I can go for scans and it'll say that the, dis the discs are worse, but the pain's not worse. And mm -hmm. then sometimes the pain is worse, but I don't feel like there's anything good. So I kind of the medical side is just it's not gotten me very far. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Perfect. He's done his homework. <laughs> Mostly psychologically and physically. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So I'm curious. Let's let's start with you. Let's start with you because we it, it's this is a bookcase example. It doesn't get better than this. We know there's trauma transfer. So that, that aspect is definitely going to be thrown in to the healing with his dad, right? So I'm curious, so 15 years ago, where, where were you, in, in Australia or South in Africa. South, South Africa? Africa. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a busy place, that's why it's like, oh, it's like a bit of, it's like New York with, in the jungle. Okay. So 15 years ago in South Africa, got it. Do you remember like... You know, your, your emotional stress at that time that was building up, say, a year, two years before, or yeah. even on that day. Um, it was really crazy because I just started my own business about a year or two before, ah. um, working in IT. So, and then my ex, we divorced now, but I was married at the time, my ex-wife fell pregnant and mm -hmm. we had our first child. Mm -hmm. So the first time I really had this back issue was the day before his first birthday party. Because I remember thinking... I'm going to end up spending, you know, the whole day for his birthday party lying on my back and I'll miss the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a lot of work going on, so there was, this, there was just a serious amount of stress in terms of getting the business running, making sure that that was working, you know, paying salaries, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Just, just, a, just to throw it, just to get an idea. What was Dad's patterns like in terms of? Because I just I'm, I'm from South Africa as well, and I know there we have the typical archetype: the wife takes care of the she takes care yeah, of the yeah, house, yeah. and the That's husband exactly. has yeah. to take care of everything: the money, the security, yeah, protection. Yeah, exactly what happened. So yeah, Dad was never around. He was out working, providing. Yeah. Okay. And on weekends he was playing hockey. Mm -hmm. So you know he really didn't wasn't really featuring mm -hmm. when I was growing up. And mom was, you know, stayed home mom, taking care of food, cooking, yeah. all the household chores, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Do you know, are you aware of any patterns perhaps that you observed in dad? Like, did he, did he seem like he was, you know, overwhelmed by being the provider? Was there a sense of stress, you know, with him that you um, were aware of? I think if there not, was some it's constant okay. kind of low level stress, but nothing. Okay. He seemed to be okay with it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, He's quite a cold emotion. He's quite a. He, he doesn't share emotions very well. Mm, so it's hard so to it's, read. It's hard to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can. They tend to be the worst. The poker face, <laughs> because there's normally a lot going on underneath that. That's a coping mechanism. Yeah. Got it. So I'm curious with this business, gosh, you know, this business and, you know, all the stress and the kid came, it's all these new extra responsibilities. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So just emotionally, how did that make you feel? 
just totally, I, I felt overwhelmed, but I also felt torn. Like I felt like, you know, the business was pulling this on and the home kids were pulling this on. I was yeah. literally being torn in shoes. sense of like, duty, yeah. Yeah, what do I do? I've got to sort this out. I've got to spend time with the kids. You know, I've got to sort of support my wife. Yeah. So just feeling totally um, overwhelmed and kind of split, torn. You know, trying okay. to achieve it. Got it. And how did that make emotionally make you feel, feeling that, that torn, feeling so split between the two? Um, I guess just wanting to shut down, just wanting to just get away from it all. Yeah, okay. just kind of overwhelmed. Um, this is very interesting. I just want to I just want to share it because I want to see if this relates to. You. The running away part that he felt, right? Wanting to wanting to escape, wanting to get away, but also knowing that there's this deep genetic program, this biological makeup in him of I have to stay, I have to take responsibility for you know the life that I've set up for myself, and it's almost like I I, I can't help but feel it's a part of him that was on the brink of leaving, of wanting to go, that running away instinct, but it's almost like the lower back caved in to keep him in his sense of duty. Is there anything around that? That resonates. <laughs> and I've noticed, so what I've looked at later is mm. when, when else did these spasms happen? Yeah. And later on it turned, to, turned out to be when there was too much going on. Mm. Like I moved positions, so we moved to Melbourne, then I moved to Sydney and I got a new position, which was kind of really intense, mm. um, a lot of stress and I had a lot of back issues and the spasms came back. Yeah. So um, then I realized there's kind of a, there's a link, something's going on, it's not, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's almost like when you're in a situation where you know it's not healthy for you, you don't want to be in it, but it's almost like there's not an option. Yeah, nowhere to go. Leaving is not an yeah, option. Yeah, you can't go anywhere, yeah. And it's like the, the reason, the psychological desire to go is so strong that it's almost like there's a physical reaction to give you an excuse and a reason to stay. To not make that shift, to not make that change. Because of your sense of duty. Yeah. Because I, I, I can see you as someone that's very loyal. Yeah, like absolutely. if I make a decision, I stick to it. Like yeah, you're like this strong. word of yeah. my honor soldier. Yeah. Absolutely. But to your detriment as well. Yeah. Got it. Okay, you're doing great. Got it. So just one more question with you. You yep. said you felt <clears throat> overwhelmed. Yeah. How did you feel before you felt overwhelmed? Stressed, just stressed. Um, Got it. And if that stress had emotions around it, if that feeling of overwhelm had emotions with anger. it. Anger. There we go. What um, else? Um, You're doing great. This is perfect. Like feeling alone, having to, you know. Alone or isolated? Um, There's a difference. You can feel alone when you're with a lot of people, alone. but isolated. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but isolated because no one's around. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Alone. Perfect. What else? You felt angry. You felt alone. What else did you feel? Um, rage. Mm -hmm. But suppressed rage. Like Got it. Yeah. Wanting to shout but bottling it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was more the anger. So before you felt the anger and that rage, what did you feel? Um, unsupported, maybe. That's it. Now we're getting there. You're doing great. You're exactly where I want you to be. That's perfect. What else? Um, It's hard to kind of... That's okay. So when you feel unsupported, how did that make you feel? When you were unsupported? Just weak and lonely. Yeah. Perfect. So remember, we're also working with the spine and we have pain. So we're going to be looking at conflict and values. Okay. So I'm curious, 
that would tell me already just knowing that there's pain in the sp pain in the spine that there's a part of you that wanted to do something but it was in conflict with your strong family values that you that you had. Is there something there that you can relate to during that time? Like a part of you that perhaps just wanted to be free, just wanted to just embrace the side, you know, the fun side and the creative side of life, but then there was also that part of you that's like, I have to fulfill this this expectation of me um, as a father and as a husband and as a as a Yeah, well it was all expectation and responsibility. Yeah. There was no fun or, yeah. I don't remember doing anything for me. It was there we all go. just either work or family responsibility. Um, Right there. So that, how did it make you feel that there was a part of you that just wanted to, to play, to have fun, and then a part of you that had to, you know, um, take that responsibility and, and fulfill those expectations? You yeah, kind of stuck, like yeah. wanting to move but not being able to. Got it. Yeah. And how did it make you feel to feel stuck? Angry, like. Perfect. What else? You felt angry in what else? Um, You're exactly where I need you to be, it's like perfect. Unexpressed, like unfulfilled, like um, mm. you're just unworthy almost. Like I don't really count as much as I feel like I should. Mm -hmm. yeah. Got it. And when you feel that anger, aloneness, feeling unsupported and unworthy, how does your physical body react? It wants to shut down. Mm -hmm. It's it like just, hiding? It's or? like hiding. Mm -hmm. um, but also rage, like, it's kind of the two. Yeah. I want to shut down, but I also want to fight. Got fight. it. Got it. Yeah. I just want to double check with you. I, didn't re I, I wrote it down, run away, like the running away instinct of flight, because that's one of the first things that you said when you sat down. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure, is that, do you relate to that in this context? Or was that more when you were telling me about the story rather than really going into the emotions? Um, I think a little bit, I can relate a little bit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I just want to make sure that he, that he can relate to that, and it's not just me assuming that. Okay. Got it. So we're going to have fun. We're going to be playful. I want to, I want to connect to that lower, that part in your in your body and lower back. And we're going to sure. pretend that that pain has a voice. And I'm going to do this with you. Okay. okay. So nice deep breath. <sighs> Relax. Breathe out all that, all that stress. We're just going to pretend that we feel he sits or observe our where it is shifting to the low back area. We're going to be playful. We're going to pretend that that pain had a voice. And if it did, what would it say? It's kind of two things. Like one is move and help. That's what I got as well. I got help, but the second one that I got was I feel like you're shouting and you're shouting and you're shouting and no one's paying attention. No one is listening. Yeah. Yeah. No one. It's like just that feeling of powerlessness. Like despite the effort and, and the anger that you even project into shouting and being heard, it's just like there's nothing coming yeah. back. Yeah. 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 It's like you're fishing and you're putting all this effort <laughs> in to put the line in and it comes back and there's your bait was taken. Right? It's that, that kind yeah. of feeling. Yeah. I'm just going to put the word, like the helplessness and feeling ignored. Ignored, in there. totally ignored. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ignored, yeah. Got it. Perfect. You're doing great. You're doing very good. Thank you. It's very helpful. So, last question. During that time of stress, you know, when you felt you felt that, that anger, aloneness, unsupported, unworthy, ignored, and helpless. What is that one dominant positive need that you had at the time? What did Brian need? 
just support, just, you know. too complex but I wouldn't be surprised if this need for support this this negative associations that he has attached to this positive association is coming from his mom the starting point of that coming from mom you know needing support and feeling you know unworthy ignored helpless because of her upbringing and I wouldn't be surprised we'll see that tomorrow we'll see that with identity overlap and we'll move tomorrow if, if I'm right so I'll be checking in with you yeah I'm very it'll be really good to know that so we have the emotions, we have the instincts, we have the positive need. We know that there's um, conflict and values, we have that. So now we're going to start the process, we're going to start the pain healing. Perfect. So how are you? What was it like? What did you feel, see, hear, or sense? Like, what was that? You went on a journey, didn't you? Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear it. Just <coughs> so much stuff came up for me. Um, it was just incredible, actually. So, w when you were saying the affirmations about you don't have to, um, I can't even remember what you said, but it kind of, as you said, you, acknowledging the differences between the emotions didn't, I, I felt stuff moving, but not really. Mm -hmm. But then, after that, when you said, you know, you don't need to be, you can tread your own path, you don't have to take on those responsibilities. Yeah. And it just felt like this, just this weight just being taken off yeah. me. And I just wanted to burst out crying. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still feel like totally. It's almost like it's unbelievable I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, you do yeah, that. so it was, yeah. It was yeah. yeah, just the, the expectations that I've been putting on myself. Mm. You know, that's become totally apparent to me. You know, so wanting, to, the, wanting to be yeah. everything, the best father, the best husband, you know, the best, you know, at work. Just, and for whose approval? My dad's. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't really realize until yeah. recently. <laughs> so, the acknowledgments came from me just asking him, what do you need to hear? What do you need to be reminded of? And the body will tell you. That's why that focused state is so incredibly important that you learned on day two. Because it's in that space where you will hear it really fast. It will come to you really automatically and fast. So, I'm just curious. We're not done, but I'm just curious. How, how is your lower back also feeling? What's your awareness there? It feels solid, <laughs> like the pain's still there, but it's mm -hmm. it's gone from a three to maybe a two or a one. Mm -hmm. um, but it, yeah, it feels. <coughs> I feel more positive about it. Mm -hmm. If that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, got it. So let's let's look at this part because he's not complete. Because there was a dynamic with that that was really deep that he didn't have conscious awareness of, or full, fully conscious awareness of, of how deep that went. Do you want to address that now? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Perfect. Nice deep breath. That's perfect. Now you're going to step into my office. I would like you to feel, see, sense, or hear a beautiful white empty room. And let me know when you're there. Mm -hmm. And now, I would like you to invite your dad to step inside. We're doing an MIT emotional healing session. Let me know when dad's there. Mm -hmm. I would like you to let dad you know, take one to two steps closer to you in front of you.
And the reason why I put a lot of emphasis on the expectations for him as well was his dad was very successful, right? And wanting to match that. But I just want to see what else comes into play as well. Now my question to you is, how does it make you feel to have that there in front of you? Kind of a bit threatened. What else? That's perfect. Misunderstood, right? <clears throat> Got it. Like he doesn't get me. <clears throat> what else? Judged. How does your physical body react? Tension, like I can feel my jaw tense out of my hands. Is it like a freeze or a fight reaction? Freeze. Mm -hmm. And where in your body do you feel these emotions? any part of it outside of the body? No. Inside. Got it. And as you're looking at, at Dad, what did you emotionally need from him? Just love and acceptance. Which one resonates the most with you for this purpose, this exercise? Love. Perfect. So I would like you to stay there in that room. I'm just going to help you to start the, the healing now. So keep that there in front of you. Be okay with his presence. Allow it. And I'm going to go quiet for two to three minutes. I'm going to connect with you and I'll come back. So tell me, what, what, would, what was your experience? Um. Things kind of clicked into place that when you said Dad was doing what he thought I wanted, that mm. just went click. You know, yeah. Because he provided, he bought stuff, you know, he, he paid the bills, yeah. you know, like. Um, and you try to do that as well, like that was your way <laughs> then also of showing. I see, I see but that it was, now. it's not in alignment with you. No. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, I just feel like, I feel like I've been put through a ringer, but in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And how do you feel when you think back to that first old initial problem that we talked about in the beginning of the session? Like, way back in the beginning. I just feel like I've got a whole new perspective on it, mm -hmm. on what was going on, what I did, mm -hmm. how other people were doing their own stuff, and mm. you know, there was support, but I didn't ask for it, mm. you know, etc. I've just got a completely different, different story <laughs> now. <laughs> it's changed. Got it. Yeah. But how do you feel? Just, yeah, neutral. Yeah. Very yeah. good. And, and with Dad? Better. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we, we do love each other, and the, the relationship's getting better over time, but there's mm -hmm. still work to do. Of course. Um, it involves least, him as yeah, well. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel yeah, more positive. Got it. Very good. And how does your back feel? Good, yeah. But, but the same as after the session, so I didn't feel mm -hmm. any change in the second mm -hmm. part. Yeah. So how much out of ten is it now? Still a one or two. So if that one or two had a voice, be playful now. <coughs> if that one or two had a voice, what would it say? Drink oh. water. Really? <laughs> so you need to drink water. <laughs> 
you know I drink a lot of water? No, I don't drink water. Oh, so you drink hydrated. Ooh. Okay. So Hi everyone, so I grabbed Brian after the demonstration. We're actually now at the end of the day because when we ended the demo, we started with three out of 10. And he would say it normally ranged from three out of 10 to say seven out of 10, you know, if it's especially after the end of the day when sitting a lot and, you know, moving around or sitting still too long. Now, the cool part is that when we actually <laughs> asked yeah. his low back, like, what else do you need to calm down even more? Something that I haven't heard for a while, which I have in the past, but He's such a great reminder for this. It actually, his body actually said, I needed more water. So what I realized was that his body has become also so acidic and so dehydrated that it's actually contributed and added to the pain, the acidity. Because now you have that injury, that weakening part in the spine. And so the acidity actually aggravates that. It makes it worse. And so I thought, okay, wow, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Brian on this because his body yeah. said that, so I'm just going to wing with it. So I made sure that he had a lot of water. I was like, I was his servant this yeah. afternoon <laughs> for the day. It was great. I know, it was funny. But so, like just, 10 cups. <laughs> I know, exactly. But you haven't actually had a lot of water. You have no. been dehydrated, no. very dehydrated. Oh, yeah. Today I've had about 10 cups. Normally I don't drink it at all. That's yeah. the thing, yeah. right? So now his pain has come down. When I just asked him, you know, I thought, gosh, I'm not so sure about this because the problem is, when you work with spine, spinal issues, and if there is a physical injury already, the it can almost be dangerous to heal the spine so that the pain comes down completely because the pain is there to show you where your limits are, right? So now imagine all the pain went away, and he's thinking, gosh, you know, with this in physical injury in his back that can take time to heal, it's like, wow, you know, I can go bench press 100 kilograms, right? So he's going to damage his back completely. So the pain is there to show him as well, or in other people as well, just for you if you're out there and, you have ha and you've and you been challenged with this. It's, it's showing you where your limitations are, right? So the pain can also be, in this case, a positive point to show you what you can and cannot do while your back is still healing. But what's cool is when I asked him just randomly when he walked past me in class, I said, you know, so how does your pain feel? And he said it's what? 0 0.5. 0 0.5, which is amazing. And I asked him, so when was the last yeah. time it was that low? And he said a year ago. So, you know, whoa, we're making progress. Yeah. It's really good. So yeah. I'm going to keep um, in contact with him to see how he goes after this as well. But I just, I'm making a point here, just the importance of him listening to his body saying, water. I was expecting there could be more emotions and everything, but we both felt that it we cleared it. It was weird. Yeah, I yeah. didn't expect it to say water. Yeah. I mean, I've never spoken to it directly, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but we were, we were both expecting emotions. Yeah, and, yeah. And stress was, or yeah. something like no. that. And there was, I also sat there <laughs> in the blank. No, no. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go with him then because <laughs> I didn't have a better answer. <laughs> so it was amazing. So I just thought we'd give you this update at the end of the day where we did the demo and we'll keep in contact with him as well. Thank you so cool, much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Specifically for a case like like Brian, when I work with clients, for example, also with slip discs, you already have existing damage in the spine. Now, it could also be a coping mechanism of the, the body for the pain to not completely go away in the initial session, especially if it's not an instant healing, meaning the healing can still take place and speed up over integration period, which is normally seven days. But the pain is still there to show you where your limitations are. Right, to show you that there's now damage, the, the spine could now be healing, but the, there's a still a dull pain that remains that's saying, hey, just remember you have a back that's injured that is, could now potentially be in the healing process so that you don't, for example, go to the gym and start you know, bench pressing 100 kilograms because you feel like there's no pain, so now I can go for it. Because you will, you will damage the back even more and undo all the work that's been done and of course you'll have more damage than what you had before you started. Okay, so pain is also there to show you where your limitations are, especially if there's already physical damage. And that's not just for back pain, that is also other parts of the body. So just be mindful of that. It's like doing you know, a healing on your hips, where you have hip pain where the bone is now grinding against the other bones, right? Now if you take that pain away, oh wow, I don't have pain, but it could still be healing, because it's bone. Now you go run a marathon because you don't feel pain. Right, so the pain is still there to just give you an indicator of how far to push 
yourself physically. Okay? So just be, be mindful of that. 